Good evening, everyone. The regular session of the Bossier Parish School Board meeting for Thursday, April 24th will now come to order. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors by the Benton High School JROTC. Remain standing for the prayer request by Superintendent Rowland, the prayer led by Superintendent Member Miss Brotherton, and the national anthem sung by Benton Middle School student David McGinnis, followed by the pledge led by the retired senior Master Sergeant and Airline High School Aerospace Science Instructor Margo Miller. President Bertrand and uh, board members, we do have three prayer requests before we have our, our national anthem in the, in the pledge. First of all, Halton Middle School teacher Heather Valentine is battling cancer. Let's please remember her. Seventh grade, Halton Middle School student Kaysen Shelton is also battling cancer. And then today, our uh, HR supervisor, Ms. Tanya Hilburn, is recovering from surgery. And always remember our students, our staff, our board, and all of our leaders in our district. Join me in a prayer, please. Dear Father God, Father, we love you. And Father, we are so glad that we are in a country and in a parish where we can come to you, Father, and pray. And Father, we lift up these prayer requests that our superintendent just gave us, Father. We pray for the ones that are battling cancer. We pray for Ms. Hilburn that just had her surgery, Father. We pray for healing, Father. Father God, we pray for all the others that were not named that are out there battling, battling cancer, battling illnesses, Father, battling all kinds of problems, Father. We know, Father, that you hear our prayers, Father. And Father God, we know you answer those prayers. Father, we thank you for the parish that we work in and that we live in. Father, we thank you for our military families, Father, that come to our parish and put their kids in our schools, Father. We thank you for our teachers and our employees, Father, that help these children every day, Father. And Father, we just thank you, Father, for blessing us, Father. We ask today, Father, that you will just continue to look over our parish with, uh, with everything you do for us, Father. We love you, Father, and we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang loud the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh sailors that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. That's, that's going to be a hard one to follow. Please join me in the pledge. 
whoa, 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 slow down. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. military please stand for me please Horseshoer in the military. That's how long ago it was. I shoot horses. <laughs> Me and you, Colonel. <laughs> right Agenda item 1.02 approval of the minutes for the special session of the board for March 7th, 2024. So moved. A motion Second. by Ms. Brotherton. Second. Second by Ms. Poole. Please vote. Motion passes. Item 1.03. <coughs> Approval of the minutes of the regular session of the board for March 7th, 2024. We said that one. Mr. Bullard, motion. It's seconded by Mr. Fulting. Please vote. Mr. Newman. Sorry. Motion passes. Mr. Creighton. Did you abstain? Yes. Okay. That was item 1.04, approval of the minutes of the special session of the board for March 26, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Newman, second by Mr. Backhouse. Please vote. Motion passes. Item 1.05, approval of the agenda for the regular session for the board for April 4, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Smith, second by Mr. McConathy. Please vote. Motion passes. <clears throat> Item number 2.01, recognition. Bossier Parish Schools, good news, presented by Ms. Sonia Bills, public relations liaison. Good evening, President Bertrand, Superintendent Rowland, to all of our board members and everyone here this evening. You know, April is a very special month for us here at Bossier Schools. It is the month 
of the military child, a time that we recognize that our military-connected students, um, they serve too when their parents serve because we know that they also pay sacrifices. And we have many ways that we will be celebrating throughout the month. In fact, we are already celebrating, as you can see, all of them in their purple shirts here tonight. And I wanted to be able to call Military Services Manager Holly George forward for a few special presentations. So if you would please welcome her. Thank you, President Bertrand, Superintendent Roland. This is a special time for us, for our school system, for our military families. This is the month that I wait for every year being the military family manager, and that is not that we don't celebrate our military children all year long, but this is the month where we put our purple on, and I want to publicly thank our board members for wearing their purple. It just looks awesome and wonderful. And I appreciate that. So the month of the military child um, was started several years ago. And one thing that we do acknowledge is we have a strong partnership with Barksdale Air Force Base. There are six branches of the military government along with the Ameri Army National Guard, the Air National Guard. All of these have a presence in the state of Louisiana and some people don't realize that. But with Barksdale in our neighborhood, we. Um, we have a special connection and partnership with them, and, and we cherish that daily with our military families and with our military students. At this time, I would like to read portions of a resolution written by J. Adam Bass, Senator for our district, District 36. He could not be here this evening, and he does apologize. You know, they're still down south. But he was instrumental in writing this proclamation for Bossier Parish Schools. At the end of reading it, I would like to present it to Colonel McGinnis, if you'll come forward. You can. Yes, sir. And while he's coming forward, he's the commander of the second bomb wing at Barksdale Air Force Base. He is a family man. His children go to Bossier Parish Schools. And um, we are so thankful for him. He started this year as the new commander at Barksdale Air Force Base, and we've met with him, and, and we're just tickled pink to have him out there supporting our schools and allowing us to support him. And also with you. Chief Mateus is the uh, acting commissioner for the second bomb wing. Thank you. I was afraid I would say your name incorrectly. So he also brought Chief Mateus, and we're thankful for him too. So I'm just going to read portions of this resolution before I hand it over to you. And this is a resolution or a proclamation to recognize April is the month of the military child for Bossier Parish School System, whereas the Secretary of Defense, Casper Weinberger, in 1986 designated each April as the month of the military child, whereas the month's purpose is to recognize the contribution that the military child makes as their parent or parents serve our nation, and whereas the life of the military child is filled with unique challenges such as parent deployments, reintegration, and frequent moves, and whereas the children of the military serve members continue to make significant contributions to our schools, our community, state, and country, despite prolonged and repeated absences of one or both parents. Whereas the Louisiana Department of Education and the Louisiana Council on the Interstate Compact for Military Children has awarded the Purple Star designation to 22 of the Bossier Parish Schools for their excellence in supporting military-connected children and their families, and whereas the month of the military child reaffirms that commitment to ensure excellence in our schools and our military connected students who face unique challenges that other students never experience. Therefore, be it resolved that the Senate of the Legislature of Louisiana does hereby recognize April is the month of the military child for the Bossier Parish school system. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution is transmitted to Bossier Parish school system and the members of Barksdale Air Force Base. Thank you. For At this time, I have asked Colonel McGinnis to address the school board, and we are so excited to have him up here to speak. Thank you. And I can turn that around if you'd like me to. Can I address the school board from here? Is that a, there. We'll, we'll do this. All right, um, uh, Superintendent Rowland, thank you for the, this opportunity. Members of the school board, um, persons in attendance, thank you. I uh, would also like to say a special thank you to the Honor Guard. 
Man, what an outstanding job uh, by the Honor Guard. Let's give them a quick round of applause, please. And I'd love to tell you my son who sang the national anthem gets it from me, but I don't think anyone would believe that. But uh, outstanding job, David. So a few years ago, uh, during a, a military move, which uh, my family has become quite accustomed to, I, I think we figured that our 12 and 13 year old are on their seventh house, um, we, uh, we took a family trip on a cruise. And uh, after dinner, there was, a, uh, there was a, a PG comedy show that our kids really liked, so we, we always tried to get there. And uh, one, one evening, we were sitting near the front row. And uh, the comedian came on stage, and, and he was working the audience, and he looked right at my son, and he said, hey, where are y'all from? And my son thought about it, and he looked at his sister, Katie, and she said, well, and <laughs> kind of shrugged, and uh, because at the time, uh, I think they had just crossed over to being more North Dakotan than Virginian, but two weeks earlier, it would have been more Virginian than North Dakotan. Their parents tell them they're from Texas. They've never actually lived there, and they were both born in Louisiana. <laughs> That is the life of a military child. And what many people don't realize is that when we move to new towns, um, it is not just the kids, but often it is the families that the first interaction we have with our, our new place of service is the schools. Move in the summers, it's uh, the first thing you do. You get your kids enrolled in sports, you get your kids enrolled in dance, band, pep squad, choir, uh, whatever other activities they're in. And often it's not just the kids that are coming to the school, it is the parents. It's where the parents meet, uh, meet their friends. It's where the families first integrate into the community before they even check in on base. And um, you have a very outsized uh, influence on making military families feel welcome to the community. So I just wanted to, uh, to take a moment and, uh, and thank this school board um, and uh, Superintendent Rowland. Uh, we, we had a great meeting a few weeks ago uh, for everything that you're doing uh, to make Bossier Schools the most welcoming uh, community, not just for military students, but military families. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud to say now that I think if we were in the same situation, uh, hey, where y'all come from, I, I think both our kids would be able to say, well, we come from uh, Benton Intermediate or Benton Middle School in, uh, in Bossier City, Barksdale Air Force Base. So thank you. Thank you, Colonel. We appreciate it. He has to get back to the base, and so I told him we totally understand that. <laughs> so, uh, before I go on, I've got a couple of treats for you and a couple of recognitions for you, but the first recognition I would like to um, bring to you is Miss Jacqueline Robertson. She didn't even know I was going to point at her today, but she attends every school board meeting. She is the Barksdale military liaison, so she and I parallel work hand in hand to make sure the families are taken care of in the Bossier school system. Ms. Robertson, way. <laughs> she not only has Bossier Parish, she has Caddo, Webster, Red River. Red River. <laughs> yeah. So she's constantly moving. She has three phone numbers. She's the only one I know that has three phone numbers. So I just start with the top and I always scroll down <laughs> to try to reach her to, um, if either one of us have questions, you know, about the kids coming into the system and lately we've had a lot of phone calls yes. of families that are about to come and move in and so you know we want our families to feel recognized and know that we're here for this transition for all of our military families. I was a military brat so I get it. I was one of those constant movers also. So I just wanted to point you out Ms. Robinson. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay now for entertainment. Bernie Visser. Will you come? Let me tell you a little bit about Bertie, other than she's the most precious thing ever. Um, I went to Kingston. Stand right here, sweetie pie. I went to Kingston for their American History competition, and Bertie was up there, and I just thought she was dressed for the look, you know, because that was the look, and she belts out the most wonderful poem about a military child I'd ever heard. So after the assembly was over, I ran up to her parents, and I know they probably... <laughs> I was like, well, let me ask you, I, I need her in April, and they're like, uh, okay, you know, they, they were more than willing, and we were all excited, so I've asked Bertie to come and recite her poem for us about being a military child, 
So, Bird, do you want to use the mics? Mom still takes pictures, so we got there. Hi, my name is Brody Fisher, and I'm in Miss Whitman's third grade class at Kingston Elementary School. The title of my poem is Dandelion Kids. Military children never know where next the journey leads, but they air tough and put down roots like dandelion seeds. They make friends everywhere they go. It's hard to say goodbye, but they move to new adventures like dandelions fly. They know these children know that they are loved and learned from the start that home is a safe place they live in more inside their heart. Thank you, Bernie. I appreciate that. And thank you to Mom and Dad for getting her up here, and we appreciate it. All right. Lisa Johnson, where'd she go? Oh, get up here. <laughs> Um, Lisa Johnson is about to help me with some presentations, but prior to her, she's got some awards to give out also. She is the president of Bossier Chamber of Commerce. They have a military connect, what is it called? Military? Our, well, our military relations committee. There you go, and thank you. the Northwest Louisiana Military Support Foundation, all under the Bossier Chamber of Commerce. And one of the reasons why I wanted her to stand up here right now is we have three students that were recognized last month for winning the t-shirt contest that Bozier Chamber of Commerce supports and runs and gives awards to our students and they upped the ante this year and it was a really great hit and still have time to order your teacher if you have not done so but I wanted to show you I'm wearing the elementary winner so I wanted to point that out and that's Jay Lee DeWolf. You're gonna flash everybody? <laughs> no. <You're elementary. laughs> I'm wearing the elementary one the school board is wearing the middle school one by Audrey Marlowe, and I appreciate them so much for doing that. And then Ms. Johnson is wearing the high school one by Charles West, who's from Bozier High School. He thinks she has to model it. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, before we move on, um, I have three schools that I need to recognize tonight, and she's going to help me with the recognitions. Our goal as a school district is always to be cognizant of the unique, unique needs of the military children because they, they do have unique needs that other students don't have to experience. So in 2019, a bill was submitted for per schools to become Purple Star Schools and, we, and carry that designation. COVID hit put on hold so a year ago it was passed as a policy as um, a rule a law that our schools now can strive to become purple star schools in that designation we do have barso in our backyard but they're also across the state as i mentioned earlier several of our forces but we have 22 schools now that are purple star schools with that distinction. I have two more down at the State Department that I'm waiting to hear on. And three of those schools are going to be recognized tonight. They're new, we're excited that they joined our group. And um, so I have the state certificate from the State Department for them. These three schools and four other schools will be recognized on April 10th at the Bessie board meeting down in Baton Rouge. Uh, we do, like I said, they call Bozier first because we do have the most Purple Star schools across the state, and we're very proud of that. So first, um, I would like the principal to come forward from Benton High School. We are so excited. They have one of the largest groups in the parish, and um, I'm not going to lie, my son became assistant principal this summer, and so I told him your first job is to always do what Miss Clark says, always Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, but your first, first job is to make your mama happy and y'all become a Purple Star School. So they have done that, and they've done a great job. So we have their certificate from the State Department. You want to stand next to us? Would you like to More pictures? Come say here. something? Come here. No, I'm not in the pictures. Oh, my word. <laughs> okay. And Ms. Clark? We're just excited for this opportunity because we do serve so many military families and those students, all of our students are super special to us, but we realize that like sometimes they don't, when you ask them where they're from, they kind of pause, you know, and that's been something that we've been able to see. And so we want them to, even when they leave Benton, to say, hey, I'm from Benton 
And so when he said that, I teared up a little bit because I was like, wow, that's what we want. So we're working towards that, and I'm really appreciative of Coach George. He took this and ran with it. And then Mr. Steen, he couldn't be here tonight, but he is the sponsor of our Connect Club, and he has just taken that, and I'm really excited to see where he goes with that because he's just all about students, and he's also military, so it's going to be a great combination. So my, my people are amazing, and they're the reason that we've been able to do this, and we're excited to celebrate our military students. Thank you. All right, and next, two elementaries that are very special to me. One, because they are a feeder school for Barksdale Air Force Base and the families that live on the base. And Dr. Pearlie, I know I saw you, back row, <laughs> is the principal of Waller Elementary. And I couldn't be more tickled pink to award this distinction to them because, like I said, they are the feeder school, one of the feeder schools for Barksdale families that live on base. Well, we are very, very excited. Um, this is my second year at Waller. When I came to Waller, that was one of my first goals was for our school to become a Purple Star school. So I went to my admin team, and uh, our counselor was jumped on it. Um, and we actually had a teacher join us this year that asked if she could start a military club. And we told her, absolutely, which was an integral part of us being able to become uh, a Purple Star School. So we're thrilled because as being the feeder school, we found we know that that's very, very important and we want to build that um, relationship with the with the base and with our military students. So we're very excited to have this honor. Thank you. And I should have also mentioned um, when Benton High came on board, now all of our Benton schools are Purple Star. And this next one, I was so tickled pink because I live in South Bossier, and this was our last South Bossier school, and they are actually right outside of the base, and their mascot is the bomber. So I was really excited about that. Miss Colson from Bel Air Elementary. And um, Alicia Colson from Bel Air, I just want to tell you how special this award is. Um, I was military for a while. My husband was Army for five years. My very first day of subbing was 9-11-2001 at a Department of Defense school in South Carolina. So um, needless to say, the next day, none of the teachers could get on base or on post. That's where I was then. Not one. And so I was called in again, and I watched all the kids while people were trying to get on post. So my husband was deployed for a year. I completely understand. I want to thank my amazing staff. Um, we have several people up in the, up in the top, and of course, Ms. Bim as well. But um, we have our military club. We celebrate our military children. And I just want to thank all of you for everything that you have done to celebrate our kids. Thank you. All right, the next um, is one of the reasons why Ms. Johnson is up here. They also sponsor, put on, a video competition for all of our students. It's a PSA, and any of our 6th through 12th graders can sign up, turn in the video, and uh, we had several um, entries this year, and so her committee looks at them, votes for them, and then one is also the winner, and she's about to announce that. And then she's also going to showcase the rest of them. But uh, Mr. Thompson, if you'll go over one more slide, I think. It's only one minute and 24 seconds, but it is a mover. I'm sure that all wins. I'm a military child. Nothing's been the same since you split. Life seems to pass by, and I just stay standing. I see all the people around me just say they love me. I just want to know what I I walk by each day as the stairs pick up on the wall. It's terrifying knowing that you can be hurt. Gavin. 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 I miss you, Dad. I really do.
all dry eyes. I mean, it's my third time today to watch it. I have watched it every day since we made the choice. I have showed it to my board of directors. I've showed it to committee members. Civic leaders have walked in my office at the chamber. And I'm like, do you want to see my video of the military child for month of the military child? And it's like, it's not my video, but it's so moving. So it is such a pleasure to uh, congratulate and recognize Gavin Matt and Ashton Bechtel for this winning video from the 10 submissions. Come on down from Parkway High School. Congratulations. Congratulations. So on behalf of the Bossier Chamber of Commerce, our Northwest uh, Louisiana Military Support Foundation and our Military Relations Committee. The, um, the, the winner of the video typically gets $500. Well, there's two of them. Well, we want to do things in whole, right? So I have, for each of them, 300 crisp dollars. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, can you do something with that? Maybe? Gas money. Gas, gas money? Gas <laughs> to, to go see Dad in Colleen, right? Because yes, he's not here. Yes. So one more thing. I have a handshake I'd like to give you and congratulation to give you a congratulatory with a military challenge coin. Thank you so much. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. They are from Parkway, by the way, so we are very excited about that. <laughs> so all month long during April, all of our schools will be doing assemblies, breakfasts, um, lunches, all kinds of activities for all our military. Every one of your schools is going to be doing something special for the students, but we also have a parish assembly, a parish program that we put on every year. It was cut for a while for obvious reasons and we're back and we're going big. Dr. Machen has assured me that they're ready to roll and doing their part and it's open to the public and we want everybody to attend who can. It is going to be April 12th at 9 o'clock at Benton Middle School. So that is our parish-wide one. Each of our schools is also doing an event or events for our military families and our military children. So we're excited to celebrate the month of April as the month of the military child. Thank you. I just want to say one more thing, too, just to let folks know um, this program that you have here in the Bossier Parish School System is very, very special to me. Many years ago, I had a former mayor of the city of Bossier City, um, Donnie Jones, Mayor Jones, called me at the chamber and he said, you want to do something special? You do something for our military kids. And I was like, well, where do I start? And we talked about it and it was like, with our Bossier Parish Public School System, I went out and raised money for a two-year pilot program to embed here in the Bossier Parish Public School System. The program has been such a success and was so, so successful those first two years. It's the Bossier Parish School Board and the administration that said, we will take this on and continue this program, and it has lived on forever. And I just want to personally say thank you. Thank you for what you do for our community, for our future leaders, for our future workforce, and for our military children. So appreciate y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Johnson and Ms. George. That is the power of public schools, right? We are also recognizing three students this evening who recognize that the key to reaching their dreams is by choosing optimism. That was the topic of this year's Opti Op excuse me, Optimist Club Essay Scholarship Contest. And if you will, please help me welcome Essay Coordinator Arsenia Anthony and also the President of the Bossier City Optimist Club, Jonathan Keith.
she she's the one who really does all the work. I, I just get to give him give out money. It's a really good gig. Uh, anyway, thank you for having us tonight. Um, thank you to the board and to President Bertrand, and of course to Jason Rowland um, for all that you do for our kids. I've got two in the Bo uh, the Bozier schools as well. Um, they also attend two of these winning schools, but they didn't win, which I'll chide them about when I get home. Um, <clears throat> But you know, at the Bozier, the Bozier Optimist Club, our, our mission is to help kids and help kids locally, uh, and to challenge them to, um, to 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 rise up and and to do great things. Uh, every year, we put on an essay contest, and the essay contest is sponsored by Optimist International. Um, it gives young people the opportunity to write about their own opinions regarding the world in which they live. The approach can encompass a young person's personal experience, the experience of their country or a more historical perspective. In addition to developing skills for written expression, uh, participants also have the opportunity to win a college scholarship. And the topic uh, for this year was optimism and how it connects to us. Um, I do have a few optimists, uh, Bozier optimists in the room, so I'd like to, to recognize them. Could you please stand up? So El Albert Dyer and Gloria Yantis. Martha oh, Martha Patton, sorry. <laughs> um, so thank you for all that you do. A uh, special thank you to Arsenia for really running this show. Um, it, was, it was fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we have a medal and we have a check for each of these three winners. Um, and then afterward, I'd like to briefly kind of um, recite our, our creed. Uh, see an idea of what we stand for here here in Bozier. But our three winners, um, beginning with winner, or, I'm sorry, third place is from Benton Intermediate, Lily Sally. <laughs> Second place from Benton High School is Kadem Folsom. And first place is coming from Houghton High School, and it's Hannah Addison. First place was awarded $300, second place was awarded $200, and third was $100. And I'd be remiss if I did not <coughs> recognize their principals who put in all the hard work at their schools to lead their team in order to get these young people to do such greatness. So it, for, if the first place was, the principal was David Haney. <laughs> Second place was Whitney Clark. <laughs> one of my children's principals. Um, and third was Jennifer Burris. <laughs> also one of my children's principals. Uh, so, thank you very much. I would like to take a second and just recite our creed so you know what we stand for. If you are interested in joining, I think, one of the greatest local service groups um, around here, please check us out on Facebook or stop by. We meet every other Wednesday at California Bar and Grill for lunch. Um, but our creed, <clears throat> promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind, to talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet to make all your friends feel that there is something in them, to look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true, to think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best, to be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own, to forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future to wear a, countenance, a cheerful countenance at all times, and give every living creature you meet a smile. Hunting season's a little different. Um, to give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. To be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. Thank you.
Congratulations again to our winners. Let's give them one more round of applause. So we also have a state champion with us tonight. Actually, make that a three-time state champion that we are recognizing. Would you please welcome Josiah Dang to the front? So Josiah is a junior at Parkway High School who, let me just say, is a fish in the water. The standout swimmer won the 100-yard backstroke in 2021 with a time of 53.33 seconds. So hang on to that number for a minute, 53.33 seconds. Then the next year, in 2022, he won with a time of 51.87 seconds. So he started shaving off his own time there. This season, he was the 2023 state champion, beating his times from the past two years at 50.87. 86 seconds and he was also the runner-up in the 50-yard freestyle he is a fish in water for sure <laughs> as I mentioned Josiah is in the 11th grade at Parkway High School so he still has another year of competition left and the state record in the event is 48.53 seconds, something that he is going to have the chance to beat next season, which uh, we firmly believe that he will be doing. And uh, making him even more impressive is he's not only an accomplished athlete, but he's also an academic standout. He has a 4.182 GPA, and he is one of the top students in his class at Parkway. So he is the epitome of of excellence and we just wanted to be able to take this opportunity to recognize him for his accomplishments being the three-time state champion and also academic scholar. So Bossier Federal Credit Union sponsors our Award of Excellence program and Jill Valentine is here on behalf of Bossier Federal to present Josiah with a medallion. It is guaranteed that you're going to be seeing him make a return appearance here uh, in the next year. So congratulations again to our state champion, Josiah Dang. <laughs> Finally tonight, it was nearly 30 years ago that Plain Dealing High School principal Sandrina Isabel arrived from her homeland of Belgium to teach French here in Bossier Parish. Now fast forward to the present. And Ms. Isabel is entrenched in Plain Dealing High School and also the community, and she is so beloved. Soon after becoming principal at Plain Dealing in 2014, the school became the first pre-K through 12th grade campus in the parish, and it was a challenge that she eagerly embraced. There are a lot of moving parts, as you can probably imagine, trying to figure out all of those logistics, five lunch shifts for one example, but uh, she called it fun. She enjoyed that. Another feat that she faced was bringing up the school's letter grade. And she and her hardworking teaching staff did that too, proving that plain dealing is the place to be. They went up to a B letter grade. Susan Bogard speaks as both a parent and a teacher at plain dealing when she says, Miss Isabel has worn many hats at the helm of our school, seeing over our transition to a pre-K-12 school, welcoming new children and new faculty members with kindness and grace. She has always, always led by example, serving both as a role model for the students and the faculty. Shannon Malone marvels at the difference that Miss Isabel has made and how she juggles it all, adding that our community school is the heart of our town. Her former students are familiar with her integrity and know that in her role as principal, their children are always a priority. Ms. Isabel loves her students. She, she knows each one of them by name and on a personal basis. And her retirement will leave a huge hole in the heart of plain dealing. 
Yes, she is retiring at the end of this school year and moving on. So the faculty pulled a fast one on Ms. Isabel, which is not really easy to do because she knows everything that's going on on her campus. But they came together to nominate her for our Gold Star Award. And it was a wonderful surprise when she walked into the gym full of students and staff and thunderous applause. And Assistant Principal Dr. Anita Sampate excuse me, calls Miss Isabel a rock for the Plain Dealing High School community, adding that she has been bleeding red and black for the Plain Dealing Lions for 16 years. And we thank her for her selfless commitment, dedication, and support of Plain Dealing High School from the bottom of our hearts. We thank her too. And we could not be more excited to recognize her tonight as Bossier School's latest Gold Star recipient. Miss Sandrina Isabel, would you please come forward? <laughs> Love it. And see, she brought her cheering section, too, because she is loved there in Plain Dealing. And Jill Valentine also has another presentation to make. Principal Isabel is truly an exemplary employee of Bossier Parish Schools and of Plain Dealing High School. She has remarkably changed the lives of all of her students that she has interacted with in her 16 years of service to the parish and to the community of Plain Dealing and to her fellow educators, and really the entire community of Plain Dealing. She started there, and she has pushed them to go farther, and to truly live up to their potential, and go beyond that even. Her efforts were definitely outwardly shown whenever we learned that Plain Dealing was the place to be, when she was able to move them up to a B grade from where they were before. And that speaks volumes as to her character and her true dedication to the students and the community of Plain Dealing. And in all of her nominations that she received, there was one statement that truly, I feel like, rang true to who she is. And that's, she possesses a lion's heart. And Principal Sandrina, you are leaving a lion's worth of a legacy to the Plain Dealing community and everything that you have built for your school um, and everything that you have done for your students, it will impact them for the rest of their lives and their families as well and the entire community of Plain Dealing. You have taken on so much of the hard work and really put in a lion's share worth of effort um, to make the place, Plain Dealing the place to be. And we just want to give you one more big roar for all of your hard work and being our March 2024 Gold Star. Congratulations, Principal Isabel. longer Thank than my cookie cake. <laughs> well, and I, I want to commend Plain Dealing and the, the faculty and the staff out there because they did something that I have not seen in the 11 years of our program, and they provided cookies for every single student in the Plain Dealing school so that they could all have a piece of all the glory and gold starness <laughs> that uh, Principal Isabel deserves. So thank you so much, and thank you to the faculty and staff. Y'all have always made us enjoy our travels out to Plain Dealing. So thank you so much for all that you do, and thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on your retirement. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> but lastly, we want to bestow the Award of Excellence for all of the excellent things that you have done and will do. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you, Jill. When asked what had been her proudest moment as an educator, Ms. Isabel replied, every time I know I just made a difference in someone's life, especially seeing some students walk across the stage at graduation when the odds were stacked against them. Those are my proudest moments, and those are true words from an educator. So congratulations to Sandrina Isabel, and thank you for being a difference maker for the last 30 years here in Bossier Parish. 
And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Bales. At this time, we'll take a couple of minutes for those of you who are not interested in staying in the business part of the meeting. You are welcome. Regular session of the meeting will continue with item 3.01 to request approval of service animal policy presented by Ms. Andrea Spinney, Assistant Superintendent of Administration. Good evening, Superintendent Rowland, President Bertrand, and members of the board. I come to you tonight asking for approval to um, reinstate our service animal policy uh, IDDFB. It was originally placed in our policy manual in 2012 and removed in 2019. Um, and I'm unsure of those those reasons. There were some procedures that were put in place um, in 22 that were some paperwork that would be required of staff or students to complete um, an approval by the superintendent's designee. Uh, which is my position now and so as um, we need to follow the Americans with Disabilities Act and make sure that we are our policy is in accordance to what is required by the ADA this policy that um, Will self and I worked on just follows what the ADA requires of us and then what Louisiana revised statutes explains as well um, the dog is listed as the primary service animal and then there's also in the state of Louisiana a miniature horse um, is the other animal listed, although in our Bossier Parish policy that would only be considered if modifications and um, were in place and facilities were able to accommodate such animal if that request were ever made. Um, so I come to you today just to bring back in this policy that has already been prior in place and Will has made sure that it's in compliance with all the latest ADA. And so when um, an employee or a student desires to have um, their certified service animal on our campuses, um, there's a procedure, there's a, an application process. They do have to provide current immunizations of the animal. Um, they have to provide what task the animal um, does for that student or staff member for their disability. Um, we are limited in questions that we can ask in the situation, but it is an ADA requirement. So I just come to you today for your approval to get that back into our policy manual. I have a few questions. I have a few questions. Um, yeah, just a few questions. Um, yes, sir. Um, with all due respect to anybody with a disability, and I've, I've mentioned this to a few of us here, um, I don't believe that a disability should be put in forefront 
in front of others as well. And what I mean by that is this, is that there are students in our schools right now that have allergies to animals, dogs, horses, whatever they are, okay? There's also students in our schools that are fearful of these animals, okay? That's not even mentioning the distraction part of it. That's a, a whole other separate issue. My 10-year-old's not going to walk by a dog and not want to be in a, 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 activated or, or her attention span not be taken from that dog. The other thing that I have come in, and, and, and you know, no pun intended here, who are we going to ask to pick up the number two? So it lists in the policy um, that it is the responsibility of the student or staff member to have the animal leashed or tethered at all times, that they are responsible for it, and that includes walking the animal, cleaning up after the animal. Um, it's also required that the animal has to be flea and tick free. They have to be properly groomed. Um, but, but to answer your question about, um, you know, those that on campuses that have allergies to pet dander, um, I'll just speak from personal experience. The last six years, my campus had a staff member with a service animal on our campus, and I had a lot of those exact same questions. Um, but the Americans with Disabilities Act essentially trumps those with allergies. Um, and a school leader can separate someone with a severe pet dander allergy and have different schedules so that the, that animal and that, you know, allergic allergic student um, don't come in contact. Um, and I'll just tell you that we, we um, did our part as, as a school to uh, educate our students. And we had four-year-olds. You're talking about a fifth grade. We had four-year-olds um, that had to walk past this staff member and her service animal multiple times a day. Um, on duty, in the cafeteria, everywhere. And um, she was actually in an area of our campus where every student goes all the time. And our students did a great job. Um, we educated them on what a service animal's purpose is and, and that it's not a pet. And it took um, a little bit of education, but it worked. And, uh, and we were able to have a successful campus with a service animal. So uh, those with allergies, um, and if you talk, I've talked to several school nurses, there are very, very few people that have such a severe pet dander allergy that they can't be in the same large space with them. But if we ever came across a situation like that, we would just have our scheduling purposed so that they don't um, come in contact together. Now, the fear of animals is real, and, mm -hmm. um, and that's something that we would consider. However, we can't deny someone the right for their service animal um, with a disability due to a fear of someone else well, not to beat a dead horse but sure we're we're going to move a kid out of a class if they have an issue with the animal dander or fear therefore disabling a kid because of the disability i i don't i'm i'm sorry i'm just not seeing it i, I don't uh, and i also just feel like uh, we're in a we're in a place here as a school board where every time we turn around, somebody is going to try to bring lawsuit against us. And I got statistics here. There are over 2 million children that are bitten by animals every year, every single year. 51% of those children end up in the emergency room, and over 60% of those children are 5 to 9-year-olds. Okay? So, again, I go back to we have a kid that's scared to death of dogs. We want him to pay attention to a math teacher while he's worried about that dog sitting over there. And I only say that because at eight years old, I was treed by a dog, and I'm one of those kids. I'm 44 years old, and I still don't put my face near my own dog that I have for 12 years. So uh, I just think, I, I understand the courts are going to put on us what they're going to put on us. We're going to have to do what the alphabet says we're going to have to do, but... I don't know. I, I feel like we're walking into a very slippery slope when we start allowing service animals because um, now you just about can't go anywhere without seeing a service animal. So that's just that's my opinion and just wanted Thank that you. to be out Thank there. you for that. And let me clarify that we already have service animals on our campuses now. This policy is just um, keeping us up to date with what's already taken place in our system. So those, those animals had already been here and on our campuses for several years. So this is not a policy putting in place so that we can begin to accept service animals. They're already on our campuses. It's just so that our policy aligns with the procedures and practices that have already been taken place. Ms. Mr. Buckhouse. Ms. Finney, just for my own education, who, 
a doctor orders these? Who, who says that this child needs to have this animal with them while they're in school? And I, I'm not saying I'm against it, I'm not saying I'm for it, but who authorizes it, a doctor? So the ADA does not allow us to ask those questions. Um, we are allowed to ask, uh, we, we, we are allowed to ask a parent on, on the procedures and the application they complete um, if their child has a legitimate disability that requires a service animal, but it does not require any type of doctor's orders or prescription or any type. The only thing medically that, it, that we require in Bossier Schools is that they show proper annual immunization of the animal that's going to be on the campus. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Sorry, Bullard. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I'm sorry. I, I don't feel like I've got a dog in this hunt. <laughs> but I, I, I do. You raised a, a point that uh, got my attention. If I understood what you just said, anybody can appear at the front door of central office and say, I am going to have a service animal. Give me the paperwork. Let me fill it out. And they are automatically uh, granted access. And they really don't have to answer many questions. It, it's, uh, uh, I mean, how many guys walk in the park and, and they've got the cute dog because the cute girls like the cute dogs? I mean, let's be honest about it. Who's to, and I am not taking you to task on this. But, but did I understand correctly that they really don't, we're not allowed to ask any questions. We just accept whatever animal, and again, within the limitations that are set forth. They meet those, those limitations and automatically granted access. So we, we are allowed to ask two questions. Is there a disability that requires the use of a service animal? And the second question is, what task does this animal serve to assist the student or staff member? Um, and so they have to go through that process and explain. So you are correct. If they complete the application process and answer those questions and sign off on it and provide immunization, then as a superintendent's designee, um, I would approve or deny that request. Thank you so much. You have, it's, this has been an enlightening conversation tonight. And I don't know if Mr. Did you yeah. want to Thank you, Mr. President. Will wanted to speak. I'm if I could Will just speak. Because yeah. I think he's got some additional yeah. clarity around yes, this. Yes. Because it is very specific to have ADA approval for a service animal. There are doctor's orders that must be written. There are applications that must be made within the ADA guidelines. You can't just sign up and bring one and the animal itself has to be certified within ADA gallon. I'm going to let Mr. Self speak from a legal perspective on that. <laughs> yes, that's correct. I, I just want uh, to um, clarify a few things. First off, when we say service animals, this does not include emotional support animals. That, that That's not included in this. Um, Again, these would be, all be students listed with a disability in a 504 plan, and the service animal will become part of their 504 plan. Now, I don't want to get out of my depth because usually the second someone mentions 504, I call Wayne Stewart and Baton Rouge, but um, it, it is part of their 504 plan, disability plan, um, and not just they request a service animal. Thank you. Thank when, you. When you now, now, it's very clear. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, I just, Mr. Crate. Um, yeah, I just, you know, in a world where we're asking our teachers to do more than teach, we're asking our principals to do more than principal and our counselors to do more than counsel. This just adds another thing to it. And um, I'm scared it might prevent some of people from wanting to, to do that job. It's just thought. Ms. Brethren. So basically, this is the law and we are making sure that we are protected by having a policy in place. We have to do this. That's correct. And John Geis wrote the, the questions and the, the application process that we're using for the request, and he aligned that with ADA. Right. I mean, we're, we've already got these in our schools now. Mm -hmm. Yes, So we're just putting this in place for our protection. 
mm -hmm. and to follow the law. That's correct. Okay, gotcha. Any other questions, comments? We had a motion by Mr. Newman, a second by Ms. Brotherton. Please vote. Motion passes. Agenda item 3.02, request approval of new job description K-12 Administrative Supervisor presented by Jason Rowland, Superintendent. Thank you, President Bertrand. Board members, I provided you this information last week. We've um, briefly talked about this before, but um, we talk about the, the, what we want to try to get away from is leading in anonymity and, and isolation. And so um, what we're asking you to approve is a K-12 supervisor that will help on the administrative end we have four supervisors on the curriculum end, but to help with um, the answer to our assistant superintendent administration, also our executive director of human resources. Questions? Comments? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Smith, second by Mr. Bullard. Please vote. Motion passes. Item 3.03, .03, request approval of a new job description accountability coordinator presented by Jason Rowland, superintendent. Thank you, President Bertrand and board members. Again, um, our accountability and, uh, and assessment department is, um, is, is taking on, as Mr. Cochran just said, more and more and more tasks every year. Uh, we are giving over 23,000 more tests this year than we have in the past. And uh, it's, it's become, uh, again, Ms. Burns, uh, she leads in isolation, and we are asking the board approve a coordinator to come out of Title II funds to support her. Make a motion we approve it as presented. Motion by Mr. Bullard. Second. Second by Ms. Poole. Please vote. Motion passes. Item 3.05, permission, request permission to issue solicitations for summer meal boxes, presented by Ms. Carrie Douglas, Chief Procurement Officer. Good evening, President Bertrand, Superintendent Rowland, members of the board. Uh, staff is requesting permission to issue a solicitation for meal boxes as part of the summer feeding program. program as with all of our proposals, um, that we receive, we will evaluate those and bring back before the board a recommendation for award. Mr. President, for clarification, we're going to go back to 3.04? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Sir, we are currently voting on 3.05. Yes. Thank you. Mr. President, make the motion that we grant permission to issue the requested solicitation. Motion by Mr. Bullard. Second. Second by Ms. Brotherton. Please vote. Okay. Motion passes. We'll go back to item 3.04, request declaration of surplus lines presented by Ms. Carrie Douglas, Chief Procurement Officer. Thank you. Thank you. Per the memo dated 4-2, staff is requesting the items listed with them be declared as surplus. So moved. Second. A motion by Mr. Newman, second by Ms. Smith. Please vote. Thank you. Motion passes. Item 3.06, report scholarship committee meeting held March 26, 2024, presented by Eric Faulting, chairperson. Yes, thank you, <coughs> President Bertrand. Um, yes, we did meet March 26th, 4.30 in the BIC. Um, everyone was in attendance. We did uh, recommend for approval of two $2,000 scholarships, two $1,000 scholarships, and we um, did recommend to raise 
we were originally doing $500, one $500 Bipstool scholarships. We decided to do, or we voted on two $1,000 Bipstool scholarships. <coughs> Along with the one $500 scholarship provided by the Mildred and A.J. Barnes uh, Burns Scholarship Fund and then two $500 scholarships provided by the Patrick Wartman Scholarship Fund, um, we did raise enough money. Um, I really, uh, I just, on a personal note, I appreciate y'all that helped me uh, and, and, and even Miss Tammy for staying um, and helping Miss, Miss Billy Jo because she had to leave. So I appreciate y'all helping me so much on this. We were able to raise a good bit of money to be able to give more scholarships and um, um, it was voted unanimous 5-0 to adjust the scholarship amounts. And um, that's all. This item out of committee, please vote. Mr. President. Mr. Newman. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to point out that Mr. Faulting did a fabulous job fundraising and uh, I've been on the boards my third term, 10 years, and this is the first year I think we've ever been able to not only increase a dollar amount of a scholarship, but add a second one. So mm -hmm. uh, hats off to you, Mr. Faulting, for your fundraising efforts and getting out there and pounding the pavement. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, item 3.08, <coughs> report insurance committee meeting held on April 4th, 2024. Presented by Kenneth Wiggins, Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. President. The, recommended, uh, the motion made by Mr. Bullitt was so encompassing and, and eloquent that I can't put it into words what he has presented to us. However, uh, Ms. Bamberg and our attorney will rewrite the resolution to, uh, to make, ensure that the board gets the final word and uh, the raises that are implemented or not implemented. That's the gist of it. But they'll bring back the uh, the other resolution. But we recommend we approve the uh, recommend the the not motion that was made by Mr. Bullard at this time. It was unanimous. And I walked in late for clarity. That was just to actually not give her full authority, but the authority to fall mm -hmm. back to the board and a vote. Right. Correct? Yes, sir. The okay. intent of the re May I speak? Yes, sir, Mr. Bullock. Thank you, Mr. President. And you are correct, Mr. Okay. Newman. Uh, the intent remains the same, namely that we do not keep falling back into this uh, uh, habit of allowing a year or two or three to pass without adjusting our uh, premiums appropriately. And uh, but rather than uh, allowing or delegating authority up to a certain point to the chief financial officer, it will be uh, the re responsibility of the CFO to report 90 days prior to implementation date to the board, and the board will, board would then make the final decision as to any modification of premiums. Thank you. Any further questions needed? I'm sorry, sir. I was saying, is there any further clearance needed in that is on that issue? Yeah, yeah. we're good. Uh, yeah, I just, I walked in late and I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah. Right. This item on the committee, please vote. <laughs> Motion passes. Item 3.10, item two of the insurance committee meeting, approval of health and dental increase rates. Thank you, Mr. President. The motion made the table item to approval of health and dental insurance off the table. And it was uh, unanimously recommended that we take it off the table. The first part of it. That has been voted upon. Any questions? I think it was postponed, right? No, after that. After, okay. After do it, table, untable it first. Our attorney said. Wait, so. So are we postponing or removing all together? It has to come off the table. Yes, sir. We leave it on okay. the table. Okay. It, okay. it was on the table. Okay. All right. It has to be taken off the table first, correct? Right. It, it was correct. table last time. And we did. If it was so taken off, if it was not taken off the table, uh, the motion would have died there. So we took it off the table for further discussion and then uh, voted to postpone the decision on it. So the insurance committee voted unanimously to take it off the table. It has to be voted on by the board. 
motion by Mr. No. It came out of committee. Out of this, this item came out of committee. Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. President. Enough for much discussion. The uh, committee voted to uh, postpone this item until April 18th. That was unanimous vote also. Out of committee. Please vote. So we're voting to postpone this until the 18th. Yes, and sir. it will be back on the 18th agenda. Yes. Thank you. Just want to make sure I get all the dates right. Item, go ahead. Item passes. Item 3.11, request approval of the trip, trip request. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bertrand, President Bertrand. These are in order. So moved. Motion by Ms. Smith, second by Mr. Bullard. Mr. Backhouse, please vote. Motion passes. <laughs> Item 5.01, I'm, I'm sorry, 4.01, Announcement Superintendent's Comments. Thank you, uh, President Bertrand, board members. First of all, I want to thank the board for their emphasis on the scholarship, uh, scholarship opportunities for our students this year and echo what Mr. Newman said. Mr. Faulting uh, and, and just did a fantastic job with this. Actually planning, um, we're planning a little surprise for the kids uh, next week, and uh, so we look forward to that. Also want to uh, make sure we're all aware we have one more day of Special Olympics. I want to uh, really thank Ms. Dr. Holly and her entire staff for the fantastic job. Uh, today we had opening ceremonies and just a fantastic day with, with our kids with disabilities, and tomorrow again, Benton Middle School, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., just make a note of that. Uh, also, on April 9th, Bossier Parish District Job and Education Fair will be from 4 to 6 p.m. at Airline High School. Thank uh, Mr. Justin James for allowing us to use his venue. The next regular session of the Bossier Parish School Board, uh, we will have an insurance committee meeting on April 18th prior to the 6 p.m. regular session of the board. That will be right here at the big board members. After we adjourn, please stick around. We want to get a photo of all our board members in our purple up shirts. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Bertrand. Thank you, Superintendent. Item number 5.01, adjournment of the regular session of the board. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> a motion by Mr. McConaughey, second by Mr. Faulty. Please vote. <laughs>